جري الفلك مصخر الرياح فالق الإسباح ديان الدين رب العالمين الحمد لله على حلمه بعد علمه والحمد لله على عفوه بعد قدرته والحمد لله على طول أناته في غضبه وهو قادر على ما يريد الحمد لله خالق الخلق باسط الرزق فالق الإسباح ذي الجلال والإكرام والفضل والإنعام الذي بعد فلا يرى وقربا فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى الحمد لله الذي ليس له منازع يعادل ولا شبيه يشاكل ولا ظهير يعاضد قهر بعزته العزة وتواضع لعظمته العظماء فبلغ بقدرته ما يشاء الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أنادي ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا عصي ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازي فكم من موهبة هنيئة قد أعطاني وعظيمة مخوفة قد كفاني وبحجة مونقة قد أراني فأثني عليه حامدا وأذكره مسبحا الحمد لله الذي لا يحتك حجابه ولا يخلق بابه ولا يرد السائل ولا يخيب آمل الحمد لله الذي يؤمن الخائفين وينجي الصالحين ويرفع المستضعفين ويضع المستكبرين ويحلك ملوكا ويستخلفه آخرين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين صريخ المستسفخين موضع هاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين الحمد لله الذي من خشته ترعد السماء وسكانها وترجف الأرض وعمارها وتموج البحار ومن يسبه في غمراتها الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي يخلق ولم يخلق ويرزق ولا يرزاق ويطعم ولا يطعم ويميت الأحياء ويحيي الموتى وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وأمينك وصفيك وحبيبك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفضل وأحسن وأجمل وأكمل وأزكى وأنما وأطيب وأتهار وأسنى وأكثر ما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحننت وسلمت على أحد من عبادك وأنبيائك ورسلك وسفوتك وأهل الكرامة عليك من خلقك اللهم وصل على علي أمير المؤمنين 
ووصي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وأخي رسولك وحجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبي العظيم وصل على وصل على صديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وصل على صبت الرحمة وإمام الحدا الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة وصل على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المحدي حججك على عبادك وأمنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائما اللهم وصل على ولي أمرك القائم المؤمل والعدن المنتظر وحفه بملائكتك المقربين وأيده بروح القدس يا رب العالمين اللهم اللهم اجعل حدائي إلى كتابك والقائم بدينك استخلفه في الأرض كما استخلفت الذين من قبله ما كن له دينه لذر تضيته لا أبدله من بعده خوفه أمنا يعبدك لا يشرك بك شيئا اللهم أعزه وعزز به وانصره وانتصر به وانصره نصرا عزيزا وافتح له فتحا يسيرا واجعل له من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا اللهم أظهر به دينك وسنة نبيك حتى لا يستخفي بشيء من الحق مخافة أحد من الخالق اللهم إنا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهلا وتظل بها النفاق وأهلا وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى طاعتك والقادة إلى سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما عرفتنا من الحق فحملنا وما قصرنا عنه فبلغنا اللهم المهم به شعثنا واشعب به صدعنا ورتق به فتقنا وكثر به قلتنا وعزز به ذلتنا وأغن به عائلنا واخذ به عن مغرمنا واجبر به فقرنا وسد به خلتنا ويسر به عسرنا وبيذ به وجوهنا وفك به أسرنا وأنجح به طلبتنا وأنجز به مواعيدنا واستجب به دعوتنا واعتنا به سؤلنا وبلغنا به من الدنيا والآخرة أهمالنا واعتنا به فوق رغبتنا 
يا خير المسؤولين وأوسع المعتين اشف به صدورنا وأذهب به غيظ قلوبنا واهتنا به لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم وانصره نصرا عزيز وانصرنا به على عدوك وعدونا إله الحق آمين اللهم إنا نشكو إليك فقد نبينا صلواتك عليه وآله وغيبة ولينا وكثرة عدونا وقلة عددنا وشدة الفتن بنا وتظاهر الزمان علينا فصل على محمد وآل محمد وأعنا على ذلك بفضح منك تعجله وبضر تكشفه ونصر تعزه وسلطان حق تظهره ورحمة منك تجللناها وعافية منك تلبسناها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم برحمتك في الصالحين فأدخلنا وفي علينا فارفعنا وبكاس من معين من عين سلسبيل فاسقنا ومن الحور العين برحمتك فزوجنا ومن الولدان المخلدين كأنهم لؤلؤ مكنون فأخدمنا ومن ثمار الجنة ولحوم الطير فأطعمنا ومن ثياب السندس والحرير والاستبرق فألبسنا وليلة القدر وحج بيتك الحرام وقتلا في سبيلك فوفق لنا وصالح الدعاء والمسألة فاستجب لنا وإذا جمعت الأولين والآخرين يوم القيامة فارحمنا وبراءة من النار فاكتب لنا وفي جهنم فلا تغلنا وفي عذابك وهوانك فلا تبتلنا ومن الزقوم والضرع فلا تطعمنا ومع الشياطين فلا تجعلنا وفي النار على وجوهنا فلا تكببنا ومن ثياب النار وسرابي للقطران فلا تلبسنا ومن كل سوء يا لا إله إلا أنت بحق لا إله إلا أنت فنجنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم إني أسألك أن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر من الأمر المحتوم في الأمر الحكيم من القضاء الذي لا يرد ولا يبدل أن تكتبني من حجاج بيتك الحرام المبرور حجهم المشكور سعيهم المغفور ذنوبهم المكفر عن سيئاتهم وأن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر أن تطيل عمري في غيري وعافيا وتوسع في رزقي وتجعلني ممن تنتصر به لدينك ولا تستبدله بغيره 
أعوذ بجلال وجهك الكريم أن ينقضي عني شهر رمضان أو يتدع الفجر من ليلة هذه ولق قبلي تبعة أو ذنب تعذبني عليه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم أدخل على أهل القبور السرور اللهم أغن كل فقير اللهم أشبع كل جائع اللهم اكس كل أريان اللهم اقددينا كل مدين اللهم فرج عن كل مكروب اللهم غد كل غريب اللهم فك كل صيب اللهم أسله كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين اللهم اشف كل مغيث اللهم سد فقرنا بغناك اللهم غير سوء أهالنا بحسن هالك اللهم اقضينا الدين وأغننا من الفاق إنك على كل شيء قدير <coughs> Momini, before I uh, begin with the announcement, can I request you to move a little bit further, please, if you can. There's, this, there's this some space on my left-hand side, please, if you could move a little bit further so we can accommodate more Minis who are coming a little bit later. Asant. Friday, 15th March, 2024, Eve of 5th, 5th Mah uh, Ramadan, 1445. Kindly keep your mobile phones on silent during uh, programs. <coughs> Always keep your belongings with you at all times. Please recite Surya Fatiha for the Isali Sawab of Manhumin of Sultan Ali Gulam Hussein and family, Manhumin of Hassan Ali Qasam Ali Nasser and family, Manhumin of Jafar Allu and family, Marhumin of Hassan Ali Pirbai and family, Marhumin of Bashir Karmali and family, Marhumin of Bashir Ali Rajwani and family, Marhum Jafar Karmali, Marhum Mohsin Ali Dina, Marhum Bashir Walji, Marhum Muhammad Nasser Ali Bai Panju, Marhum Muhammad Qasim Nasser, Marhum Muhammad Qasim Nathani, Marhum Gulam Abbas Raza Ramzan Ali Jagani, and Kul Manhumin, Suratul Mubaratul Fatiha. Tomorrow, Saturday, 16th March, the Zohrain program will start at 12 p.m. with Messiahs by Maulana Sayyid Kalbi Abbas, followed by Jamaat Salat at 12.16 p.m. Majalis has been arranged at Carpenter's Park at 2 p.m. Main evening program will start at 5.40 p.m. Please note the time, 5.40 p.m. with Darsa, Salat al maghribain Iftar, followed by Duas and lecture by Sheikh Muhammad Al-Hili. Al-Hadi Youth Announcement. Join Al-Hadi Youth tonight after the main program for Duas Under the Stars, a night of reflection and connections under the open skies. Uh, open to ladies 18 plus. CPB announcement. 
Kindly leave car key in the car at all times, even if your car is not blocking at any cars. Kindly park your car starting from the rear of the uh, car park and not in the front row. Lost with ideas on what to gift your loved ones. <coughs> this eat, well, look no further. Come and support our small business showcase, third time running this Ramadan on Saturday, 23rd March. For further details, please visit the Hujat website. Our green tea message, cut waste, cut costs, bring your own cutlery and save the planet and earn sawab this Ramadan. I don't know why whenever I say this, I remember uh, our Bakbul uncle. <laughs> okay, raffle tickets are for sale with some excellent prizes. Please see the treasure's desk for more details. My Ramadan Tabaruk and Iftar Fund is now open. Please speak to Brother Sajjad Tejani, Sister Nasima Bai Karim, or the Jamaat office if you would like to sponsor or part sponsor. Kindly donate generously for Hujat Stanmo refurbishment at the treasure desk or online at www.hujat.org. We will now have five minutes talk by Tessin Ali Qasim. Please welcome with Salawat. Oh. So there's a bird trying to pull a worm out of the ground for its iftar. And one of three things can happen. Either the worm pulls out completely, or the worm breaks and becomes an instant shaheed, or the bird's beak hits a proximal to the worm and deflects away, and the worm lives to see another day. And that's exactly how cracks operate inside composite materials where the worm is a fiber, um, the environment is a material, and the bird is a crack. But let's take a step back. What exactly is a composite material? So if we put aside semiconductors, biomaterials, textiles, and fabrics, then materials can be broken down into three. Metals, ceramics, and polymers. And where we have at least two of these with one distributed inside the other, in the form of particles or fibers in order to enhance the overall properties, then that's what we call a composite material. And these materials are extremely tough. Let's take an example then of concrete, which has a very similar distribution to a chocolate chip cookie. So in concrete, which is made of cement and stones, the cement is like the cookie. It's known as the matrix and it's responsible for deforming in order to accommodate stress. The stones, on the other hand, are a little bit like the chocolate chips. They're dispersed around. They're relatively hard and brittle. And their job is to reinforce the strength of the composite material. And it's this combination in this distribution that makes these materials extremely tough. And by tough, I mean they are resistant to cracks propagating through them. But what's interesting is that if we look at the toughness of cement, and the toughness of stones. Actually, the toughness of concrete is far greater. It's greater than the sum of its parts. So how is this achieved? Well, if we think about the bird and the worm, so a crack coming through concrete will have to go through the cement, and before it gets to the stone, it has to pass the interface. And again, one of three things can happen. Either the stone pulls away, or the stone breaks, or the crack deflects away, and this time, the stone lives to see another day. So you're probably wondering at this point, thank you for the introduction to composite materials, but what's the point of all this? So let's turn to Surah Al-Kahf, which is Surah number 18 of the Holy Quran, verses 96 and 97, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how Dhul Qarnayn was instructed to build the wall to lock out Yuj and Ma'juj. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Atuni zubar al-hadid. حتى إذا ساوى بين الصدفين قال انفخوا حتى إذا جعله نارا قال آتوني أفرغ عليه قطرا فما استطاعوا أن يظهره وما استطاعوا له نكبا صدق الله العلي العظيم In verse 96 it says blocks of iron Fill the gap between the two mountains. He said, blow. And when he made it as fire, he said, bring me molten copper to pour thereon. And verse 97 says, and Yuj and Ma'juj were unable to surmount it, 
nor could they pierce through it. And from this, we can postulate or deduce the following. Number one, iron blocks dispersed in a copper matrix is a bimetallic composite material. And reference to a wall that can't be pierced through, well, you'd get through a wall by breaking it, introducing cracks and defects. That means 1400 years ago, the Quran was teaching us modern day material science, that composite materials are tough materials. Number two, iron is a very good reinforcement material because it's very strong. Copper, on the other hand, is relatively soft and ductile. And we said that's what the matrix needs to be. It's surrounding the iron. And therefore, it can deform to accommodate stress. So if the wall was hit or there was an earthquake, it would be able to withstand that stress. Number three, we know that iron in the presence of moisture would rust. And that corrosion would lead to a degradation in strength of the wall. However, the iron is bound by the copper, and copper doesn't rust. Instead, it can corrode over time, but that would actually produce a further outer protective layer, which turns bluish and greenish over time, known as patina, which incidentally, if the wall was located somewhere in nature, then it would be pretty well camouflaged. Lastly, there's a mention of the iron blocks being heated as fire before the molten copper is introduced. And here's the thing, in 2021, scientists in China and Iran had a look at the effect of this and found actually it enhances the overall properties of these materials. In fact, just last year, researchers in North Africa and in the Middle East, including in Egypt and Saudi Arabia, had a look at what would be the most suitable range of temperatures in a series of publications where they coined this exact characterization, this, these sets of materials as Quranic metal matrix composites. So you see, this revelation isn't just one of historic, moral, legal, and linguistic miracles, but it is indeed, as you know, one of scientific miracles that we are still trying to analyze and decipher today. For tabarakallahu ahsanul khaliqeen, so glorious is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best of creators. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Thanks, Testing. That was amazing. Thank you. Uh, can I now request Sheikh Jawad Shumali uh, for the main lecture tonight, please? Can I also request you to move a little bit further, please? Bissalwad ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali. Dear sisters and brothers, salam alaykum. I pray that you're well, inshallah. What an interesting lecture that was, the talk. It's so difficult to come after that. It was so interesting. I wanted him to continue. I was like, tell us more. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was really beautiful. Um, tonight is uh, my final um, night. So I can see why everyone's faces are so happy. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, you... <laughs> Um, but alhamdulillah, it's been a, a pleasure to, to spend some nights with you. Thank you so much. Um, I hope, inshallah, the topic has been useful. Tonight we want to conclude, and although there's still so much more to talk about, but inshallah in other opportunities. If you remember, the topic was on Bismillah rahman rahim and we said that the whole Qur'an is almost summarized in this phrase. If a person manages to look at the world through Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, they will have a very different experience. If you remember, we said where Lady Zainab is, 
And inshallah, tonight I want to say this is not something that was only reserved for them. This is what they came to show us how to get there. From their point of view, whatever they look at, whatever moment, event in their life or elsewhere, all they see is, wow, this is a beautiful moment created by a loving, merciful God. That's why she says, I don't experience anything in my life other than beauty. It's not that life is, for example, a series of dark or boring moments and then beauty is spread here and there. She says, the whole thing to me is beauty. And we said, if we want to get there, Quran itself gives us a very important clue. And that is those who get there to that level, the last thing they have to say is, وَآخَرُ دَعْوَاهُمْ and الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Praise be to God. So we said the journey to that level, well, Lady Zainab is and all the other beautiful souls are you should follow this journey in a way that by the end of it, what you say is praise be to God. God is the hero. So we said, even for our journey of trying to become a better person, trying to get closer to God, if I think I can get there, if I think it's my um, Efforts that get me there, I'm deviating from the Alhamdulillah path. Because if I manage to make myself better, at the end of it, I say, Alhamdulillah, praise be to me, I did it. Whereas we should find a way that we get close to God, to that beautiful levels, and by the end, say thank you to God. And we said this method of trying to make ourselves better, we've tried it. If you think about it, most Ramazans, that's what we tried to do. Let me make a promise to God to be better this year. Let me change myself. Let me do this. And if we look at our life, we see that it didn't really get us to those high levels that Lady Zainab talks about, Imam Ali alayhi salam talks about, Imam Ali khut be mutaqin, we said, hum wal jannate ke man qadra'aha. You can reach to a level where you see heaven while you're still in this world. Or in another phrase, Imam Ali alayhi salam says, these mutaqin, these people who live with God, with the real God, they are always, they have always that nishat, that joy for life, that life is meaningful for them. And their kasal, their, you know that sense of feeling we have where like we're not... Like we're not entering into life with joy, says that is so far from them. That feeling of boredom, meaninglessness, that sense of being tired, says that is so far from them. Pass, it is, Imam Ali says, possible, not just possible, you have to. It's your right as a human being, it's your it's where we're all meant to be to live life like that. Every moment of it receiving it as a gift. And if we see we're not there, hopas, maybe we need to at some point accept, God, I can't do it on my own. And God says, I knew I was just waiting for you to let me do it for you. In fact, God is so respectful for us, for insan, that God says, as long as you think you can do it, I'll give you all the opportunity in the world. Go and become a good person if you want. Go on your own and see if you can save yourself. Go on your own and see what you can do. And then we go and see, oh my God, one addiction, it takes me 10 years. One jealousy, 20 years. Anger, I'm 60 years old, still not over it. God says, oh, aren't you tired of trying on your own? The best moment, the most important moment in any human being's life is the moment in which they decide, God, I tried this thing. It didn't work out really. Can you do it for me? In Dua Araf, for example, Imam Hussein tells God, God, you gave me this free will. I tried to make use of it. It was very difficult. I want to do what? Allahumma aghnini bi tadbirika an tadbiri wa bi an ikhtiyari. Can you now come and help me make decisions? 
I try to make my own decisions. Look where I am right now. I'm still far away from what Imam Ali described in Khutbah Mutaqin. I want to be here and see heaven. I want life to be beautiful. I don't want to be in pain. I don't want to be scared. I don't want to be anxious. Imam Ali, you're telling me I can be a kind of person that not only I don't have anxious thoughts, not only I'm not scared, but my presence is full of so much peace that even if another person is anxious next to me, they will feel calm. Imam Ali says, yes, hope I want that I want to be like that and Imam Ali says hope has follow my prescription Imam Ali what's your prescription he says follow on God's grace rely on God's grace not your own actions even Munajat Amir al Mu'minin, the whole thing as we discussed last night in that dua event we had later on in the night Imam says God you are Rab I'm Marbub you're Malik I'm Mabluk you're the one who owns me I belong to you Hope you take care of your belongings. You're the rap. You're the one who's got, you're the knowledgeable one. You're the one who guides. I'm the one who's lost. So I'm saying this, Ramazan, if in life you feel lost, even in one area of it, masalan, you don't know how to handle something with your children or in your own life or in the world, you don't know what needs to happen. Let go of the idea that I can save it. Be like, God, I'm lost and you're the one who guides. Pass, guide me. And then extend this to all areas of your life and see where you can get. And if I had not seen people who get there, I would not have shared this with you. Even in this year, one of the interesting things is any I saw, because I remember last year sitting here, I mean, not here, probably was downstairs, right? I mentioned that we've been. Sometimes they ask, Masalan, is it only a believer or this type of person that goes to heaven? If you ask Imam Ali, Masalan, is it only a Shia who goes to heaven? You know what he would say? He says, Shia is the one who should create heaven. What do I mean by that? Let me give you a real example I witnessed myself in the last few months. There was a time in which I was with a few people who were going through a very difficult time, very difficult. To the extent that every day, the whole thing was like, I wish I was not created. I wish I was not born. What is this life? It's too much pain. There's this lovely person very much had follows this prescription of giving everything back to God, alhamdulillah. And as a result, he's become so beautiful. I said, let's go and see this person. Let's just go and sit next to him for a few minutes. So we're going with a group of people who the whole few days ago, they've been saying, I don't want to live, this is too difficult, crying, all this. We get to the presence of this person, and suddenly they're like, oh, we forgot all of our pain. It was so peaceful next to this beautiful soul that these people, for the period in which they were next to him, they forgot about all of their problems. Hold on, does this mean that this person was special? I'm saying no, every single one of us should be like that. Every single person should be such that not only they're not worried, anyone next to them wouldn't have worries either. If it seems so impossible right now, it's because we wanted to achieve that level ourselves. Ahl al-Bayt say that way will never get you there. Just look at where you've got yourself till now. Follow our prescription, rely on God's grace and not your own actions and see where you go. Now, please recite the salawat. I want to simplify the method, although we need to talk about it more, but just like one, like one phrase to leave you with. What is this method of the prophets and ahl bayt that can immediately get us to these high levels? It says... Every person comes to this world and God gives them a share of some goodness. So every one of us, when we look inside, we can see some of God's goodness. Masala, it could be knowledge, it could be wisdom you have, it could be a talent you have, it could be some good stuff you find inside yourself. It could be taqwa. For any of us, it's different. So there's two ways of how to deal with this. Some people say hope. I have this, now I'm pious, for example, 40%. Let me make it 50. And then they spend their whole life and probably they'll end up 45 or something. I have this much knowledge, let me increase it. 
Ahl al-Bayt say there's another way. Look inside how much is there. 20 units of knowledge? 30 units of taqwa? You want more? Even this 30 units say, God, you gave this to me. Instead of saying, I have 30, let me get it to 40, tell God, God, even this 30 is from you. The moment you say, God, this 30 is for you, now you prepare yourself for the another way, which is God says, you accept this 30 is from me, now I'll give you 100. Now I'll give you infinite. So every person is sent to the world with some resources. All these are their talents, all the good things they find inside themselves. They can either go live their life on that or whatever they find, say, God, this is from you. And then God gives them infinite. Because God will not give infinite to someone who takes ownership of it. You know why? Because God says, if you think it's yours and I give you more, then you look at my other people and you look down on them. Like, imagine I have 100 knowledge, you have 20. Because I don't want anyone to look down on my people. So before I give anyone these high levels, I make sure they accept it's mine. Because if you know the goodness inside you is from God, even if you have infinite amount of it, you still look at the person next to you who doesn't have that much and you don't feel better than them. Because yes, there may be more knowledge, taqwa here, but it's not mine, it's God's. Pass, if you want to have infinite amount of knowledge, taqwa, closeness to God, peace, the step is whatever you have, say alhamdulillah. So life becomes two series of moments. Alhamdulillah moments, subhanallah moments. Alhamdulillah moments are the ones in which you see something good come out of you. Masalan, you're there for your father. Your father needs help, you go and help him. That's a beautiful thing. You give this back to God, alhamdulillah. God, you enabled me to do that. I know if it was on my own, maybe I would have upset my dad. So anything good in life, alhamdulillah. And then you also face sometimes subhanallah moments. It's that moment, for example, mom needs help, partner needs help, someone needs help. You're not in the mood, you're tired, so you're rude. Or you want to help, but you do it in a grumpy way. Okay, I'm coming to help. These are subhanallah moments. God, this is the place in which I faced my limitations. This is my own limit. God, now give me more. Give me more love, give me more patience, so next time I want to help someone, I'm not grumpy. Because either you see yourself doing something beautiful, okay, alhamdulillah, or you see yourself not being able to do the good thing. You don't have the strength. Masalan, you hear a stressful news, you get stressed, you can't handle it. Pastor, you realize, oh, it seems like I haven't received enough patience from God. So this is subhanallah moment. God, this is my shortcoming, please fill this for me. Or you fall into a temptation and you commit a sin. Oh God, it seems like this is my limitation. Please fill me with taqwa so next time this doesn't happen. Alhamdulillah moments, subhanallah moments. You follow this prescription and before you know it, before next Ramadan, you're a kind of person right now, you cannot even imagine that type of person exists. Please decide salawat. A point on istighfar, what does istighfar mean? Because I said in these subhanallah moments are when we face our own limitations. I come across an event in which I feel like the resources in me are not enough to carry me through this. A bad news comes, I shake. It's a moment where I need to be strong, I don't have that. It's a moment I need to show love to someone but I can't get myself to. It's a moment I need to forgive someone I don't find it inside me. Istighfar means this. God, come and fill the gaps inside me that stops me from doing the right thing in these moments. And istighfar is not just God, if I was angry, forgive me. Okay, obviously God does that. Istighfar is God, what was lacking inside me that made me angry? What is lacking inside me that doesn't allow to forgive my friend? Am I not feeling comfortable enough? Am I hurt? Pass Esther, what is God? Come and heal that wound so I can forgive. Come and give me so much 
internal peace that I don't need to go out in the world looking for love. Come and give me so much inner love that I don't need to follow this bad habit I have to make myself feel better. That's the reality of istighfar. God, come and fill the gaps in my heart. Pass even let's say a person we have who's facing an addiction, a bad habit. And many people I know, many of us were stuck in these things. I'm not judging any of us. This is insan, digge. A person says, Sheikh, every Ramadan I make this promise to God to put this bad habit away. The next Laylatul Qadr, I'm in the same place. So now what do we tell them? The first step is to accept you can't change yourself. Second step, you go to God and say, God, I really don't like this thing I do. I'm not happy about it. Can you come and help me find a way to get rid of this? Can you come and fill the gaps in my heart that makes me do these bad habits? And then look and see what God does. And God, when he wants to help us, he works in a million different ways. So this was the prescription that Ahl Bayt suggests. And they introduce and they say, when you come with this method, do you know what's the end of it? The end of it is something that by the end of month of Ramadan, in the Eid al-Fitr, in the Qunut of the Salah, we say what kind of life is possible for any of us. I said, you know, fasting itself is wanting all of these from God. Fasting is God. During a normal day, I make myself feel better by eating, by doing this, by... But now, I want to remember I'm an insan. Oh, you're a human soul. The whole world is smaller than me. God, why should I be such that I need to eat to feel better, to drink to feel better? I'm a human soul. Give me those spiritual food that you give to the Ahle Bayt. What did Imam Hussein had that on Ashura, even though they're attacking him, sword on his body, he still is happy. What did he have? So in the month of Ramadan, when I'm fasting, I say, God, I don't want to get my energy from this. Hope, you know, okay, even an elephant drinks water, a tiger drinks water. I'm a human soul. Give me some of that. I want some of that spiritual things you have on offer. And if you tell this to God, you know by the end of it what happens? In Qunut, what do we say? We say, God, and tudkhilani fi kulli khayrin adkhalta fihe muhammadan wa ala muhammad. Do you know how crazy this line is? It says, if you did Ramazan well, by the end of it, you should have so much belief in God's generosity that you say, I want to enter into any khair that the Prophet and Ahl Bayt entered into that khair. Oh, do you realize how crazy that is? So basically, every fazail you heard about the Ahl Bayt, you're saying, I want that too. And to khilani fi kul khayrin at khalta fi Muhammad wa al Muhammad. And then what's the next line? Wa an to khrijani min kul su'in akhraj. And I want you to take me out of any su, any badness that you took the Prophet and Ahl Bayt out of. Pass if they had isma, or they had it from the start, I want to get to that level too. Who taught you this? They themselves did. Pastor, they said, we're not introducing you to us. Sorry, we're not introducing ourselves to you to show off. We're telling you what insan is capable. Hello, you couldn't get there on your own, but now we're here to teach you the way. In Du Abu Hamza's Thomali, that many of you recite, in the nights of Ramadan, says, Allahumma inni as'aluka min al khair. God, I want from you, I ask from you, min al khair, from goodness. Okay, how much do you want? Kul. Everything. Is your relationship with God in a such a way that you can say that and you yourself don't laugh? Most of us think about it. Can you honestly, tonight, ask God, I want to be tomorrow, patience level of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. You yourself, like, <laughs> me? 
You know what Imam Hassan would tell you? You don't know God. You thought you can get there. Of course you can't get there. But if you know how generous God is, then you'll be shocked. Why are you not already there? That's why in the month of Ramadan, they said, Bia, all these names of God, go through it to see who is your God. By the end of Joshan Kabir, you know what should our emotion be? Many of us, we go there, oh God, look at my sins. Baba, that's the wrong one. Obviously, you have sins. Our emotion, the one Ahl Bayt would expect us to have, Prophet would expect us to have, is that with a God like this, why am I already not over the moon? Why am I already not the most patient, strong, loving, kind, wise being in the whole world? If God is so ready to offer all of this, what am I doing not asking for it? If the day of Qiyamah is called Yawmul Hasra, it's because on that day you realize how much you could ask from God and you didn't. Allahumma inni as'aluka min al khayre kul. I want everything. You think that's not possible? Oh, try it, digga. If it wasn't possible, Next year, everyone, Gashan, go to Sainsbury's or whatever your shop is, get a few eggs, tomatoes, come throw at me. Make shakshuka on my face. I'm guaranteeing you, Baba, this is Prophet's prescription, Ahl Bayt's prescription, Munajat Hamirul Mu'minin, Abu Hamza Thomali. Whichever one of these du'as you read, what is the prescription? That you can reach all of these highest levels. Khop, please decide, Salawat. I got a little bit excited about Shakshuka. I think I distracted myself a little bit. The kind of person who relies on God and not on his own resources or her own resources, by the way, don't think that this is just for spiritual things. Uh, there was the, even, uh, you know, when we have these discussions, there was once a physics teacher. I want to show you that even in play, I want in every aspect of life, this can help you. And he was saying sometimes before I want to go and give a lecture in front of my students, I'm a little bit nervous. It's not like I, may, I have to prepare many hours and still when I go to the class, I'm like, where do I start? What do I say? And then it was like, think about this idea. Tell God, God, even this knowledge I have, and he had loads of physics knowledge, you know, so maybe in all of this knowledge, you have said, God, you gave me. Alhamdulillah for this. Hala God, I'm going to go teach these students. They want to learn. And you yourself have said learning is good. As I'll go in the class, I accept all the knowledge I have is from you. You inspired me to say the right thing. He said, since I've tried doing this, there's not even one class in which I ran out of things to say. Has even in a classroom, God could carry you through that. I mean, when you say, God, I want every moment of my life not to rely on myself, but to rely on you, so God, with his infinite wisdom, infinite knowledge, comes with you, and whatever you need to say, he inspires you to say the right thing. Although, yes, we have limitations every now and then we may mess up, say, God, fill me more. People who follow this, no matter what area of life, they're telling me sometimes I'm going to a meeting with someone. I said, oh, I'm going to have a chat with someone who's going through a difficulty. I have no idea what to tell them. I say, God, I don't know what to say. I'm going there to help this person of yours. You've created them. Inspire me to say the right thing. They say sometimes I go to speak to someone. Words come to my mind that I didn't know before that meeting. And it, this can be your life as an insan. God says, you're in a meeting, I'll inspire you to say the right thing. You're in an in environment in which you may fall for a temptation, I will come and give you the strength, pull you out of that. That whole story of Prophet Yusuf, that on the moment of temptations, God takes him away from it, is not to say, oh, Yusuf is special, look at all of our losers. They're saying, Baba, that's possible for you too. Huh? 
مناجات خمس اشر امام سجاد تیچز است اللهم الهمنا طاعتک و جنبنا معصیتک God I don't want to think what's the right thing and do it you come and inspire me to do the right thing that moment of difficulty come in my heart and give me the strength to move away from the wrong thing this is the kind of life that's possible for an insan You're sitting there one day and suddenly an idea comes to your mind. You know what? My cousin, is he okay? Maybe I need to make a call to him. Out of nowhere, uh, God will put an idea in your mind. And you call your cousin and says, you know what? I'm going through a very difficult time and no one had actually asked me. This call means so much to me. And then you're like, oh my God. If I live with God, God will even give me the wisdom to know where should I go? Who should I look after? Who needs my help? Where can I be more useful? If the world is in a mess right now, it's because insan is relying on itself. Even religious people are relying on their own knowledge and wisdom to fix the world. God says, come rely on me and then see how you yourself will be a million times more useful for yourself, for your family, for community. You would be doing good things that right now you can't even imagine that's possible. In, among your own relatives, there are people right now who you need your help. Some of them you don't know. Some of them you, know they, you don't know how to help them. But God says, if you live with me, I'll give you the wisdom. I'll give you the knowledge. Because sometimes a family's year-long disputes or problems finishes if God in one moment gives love to your heart. I was in a city, there's this guy, 40 year old, he's had issues with his father to the extent that it's creating tension in the whole family. 40 year old person in a massive fight with his father. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, yeah, we have this disagreement with dad. He doesn't get me, I doesn't get him. I don't get him. I'm like, oh, baby, let's take this to God. You tell God, Alan, my father doesn't see my point of view and it's really hurting me. It seems like his father was actually in the wrong. But you tell God, God, give me so much love. I know it's father who's meant to support me. He's meant to be doing the right thing, but he's not now. You give me so much love that I can go to my father who's wronging me, who's hurting me, who's ruining my family, and I still hug him with love and tell him I still love you, that it doesn't matter. He was like, that's impossible, Javad. Anytime I see this, God, it goes, oh, I remember all the things he's done to me. I said, it's better not to see him because I don't want to go and God forbid hurt my dad. I was like, oh, oh, try this with God. Tell God, give me and then go and see what happens. He goes to his dad and he says, for that moment, I felt so much love in my heart for this person. I went and hugged my dad and said, thank you for everything you did for me. So God says, now you look at your dad, you see all the things he didn't do for you. Let me come to your heart. I'll make you see all the things he did for you. And for all the things he didn't do, Baba, I will come and fill those. Have you ever gone to the person you have issues with like this? Me present in the equation? If we go together and he gave such a hug to his dad, on the spot his dad changed. On the spot, his dad changed. How did this person thought this is impossible? My dad will never change. Baba, he also has ego. He's seventh year old. He finds it difficult to come and apologize to. He's older than you. But when you go and hug him like that, it makes it so easy for him as well to change. The dad changed on the spot. Problem solved. I mean, this is what every single one of us is capable of if we live with God. And I wanted to talk about now, this is at, still at a personal individual level. I wanted to take this to then what would happen to the world if you have a community who lives like this. I mean, Imam Sadiq said, I only need 17 people like this to change the world. 17 people. He said, if I had at my time, I would change the whole area. But imagine, I don't know how many of us are here. If we say, God, we want to be like this. You don't know what the world would look like by next year. Don't take, you don't underestimate yourself. You're so powerful. You're so special. 
اهل بیت سی Do you know how great we are? You can be like that. If you want it, God will take you there too. And تدخلني في كل خير أدخلت فيه محمد وآل محمد. And now let's end with a beautiful salavat that Shola would give so much light to us. La ma. Please say Zohar Ziyadat. Assalamu alaykum ya Rasulullah. Assalamu alaykum ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. Assalamu alaykum ya Fatima al-Zahra, Sayyidina Nisa'il al-Alameen. Assalamu alaykum ya Hassan al-Mushtaba. Assalamu alaykum Ali ibn al-Hussain wa Muhammad ibn Ali wa Jafar ibn Muhammad wa Musa ibn Jafar wa Ali ibn Musa wa Muhammad ibn Ali علي ابن محمد والحسن ابن علي والحجة ابن الحسن أجل الله تعالى فرجك وسهل الله تعالى ما خرجك وظهورك ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وكائدا وناصرا ودليلا وأينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Please remain seated for the tabarakah be served. Asant. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Salawat Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Mumineen, please be seated Tabaru cannot be served while you're standing, please Can you all please sit down so that Tabaru can be served? Ahasan Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Salawat Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum